What's up guys? Today I've got an absolutely amazing episode coming to you with Connor Steinbrook from Investor Army. If you guys are in the real estate space or you're just a general entrepreneur and you want to know how to create the lifestyle of financial freedom and scale your business to new heights while also doing what you love, this is the episode for you. I dive deep with Connor into how he went from making a ton of money when he's young to losing it all and building it back up to the point where he's now financially free with multiple revenue streams of income by the tender age of his early 30s. He dropped so many golden nuggets in this video and at the end we talk about something that nobody pays attention to that you need to start focusing on in order to build the life of your dreams. So without further ado, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce you you guys to Connor Steinbrook from Investor Army. This is going to be a good one. Sit down, grab a coffee, get a pen because you're going to want to take some notes with this and we're going to dive deep into real estate investing and how to become a successful entrepreneur. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. This is one that I'm super stoked about. We have Connor Steinbrook here, and he's from the Investor Army. Now, I've been trying to get this guy on for quite some time now, so it's an honor to be able to bring this to you guys. And I know that you guys are going to be able to learn some absolutely amazing tips, tricks, and secrets to level up not only your business, but your life. So, Connor, welcome, man. Thank you so much for coming on here today. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's help these, let's help these viewers get some value. Awesome, guys. So again, you know, if you guys don't know Connor, Connors has a big foundation in the investing world, but he also went from making a lot of money to losing it all to building up a sustainable and systematic business that's now allowed him to become, you know, financially free at the tender age of his early 30s. And he's built systems in place that are giving him the time back in order to enjoy his life while also scaling his income. So Connor, for anybody that doesn't know you, but also might not have heard of the investor army, which again, guys, I'll link his channel in the description below. Why don't you give yourself just a brief introduction about you and the investor army, and then we'll get into some actionable and tactical uh, things that we can talk about. Yeah. You know, I'm a full-time real estate investor and entrepreneur at Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. You know, I've done anything and everything in the single family real estate world, except for build houses um, I did that for a long time. I run a, a real estate agent team through EXP Realty in 23 states and two countries. Um, I run Investor Army, which was a consulting company, which I thought I wanted to do the right thing and help people and, and give them the real value that because I felt the industry was lacking. I thought there was a lot of frauds and fakes out there in the marketplace. Then I got behind the scenes and realized how nasty that business model was. And so I, I realized that, you know, it's tough to teach people work ethic, self-responsibility or taking personal initiative. So I got out of the consulting business, but I still had the channel. Then I really was like, you know, I was getting stopped at airports and, and Walmart and people tell me, you know, they watch one video, it changed their business and now they're profitable. And so like, I just kept pushing it. And so we learned how to monetize it on the back end in different ways. But um, now it's kind of a hobby and a pay, pay it forward type of thing for me, which is if you guys are trying to start a channel, um, I think that that's a good uh, nugget to take away that if you genuinely come from a position of service, servitude and helping others, you're going to grow a channel faster. If people see through that, you're trying to just take and take and take and use them and use the audience, you're going to have a stagnant channel. I think that's one of the reasons why our channel has grown quick is because I'm not trying to dangle a carrot and say, here's a little bit of information. If you want everything, come pay me for it. I'm just trying to help people. And so I think that's why we've grown, grown fairly quickly. Definitely, man. So, you know, one thing that I'd love for people to understand before we get into some, you know, some certain takeaways is what we talked about briefly off camera is how, you know, you were in an industry that was making you some pretty substantial money and, you know, maybe you got a bit greedy or you had the, you know, the, the young mentality and you lost it all, but then you found creative ways to build yourself back up. So why don't you just give people a little inside scoop as to what that background was like, and then we'll get right into the, the value. Yeah. So guys, if you're young in business, these are going to be some valuable lessons for you. So I have a really weird background. I went off to college in 2003 at the University of Oklahoma. I was a Sooner to get a marketing. I put 20 into an online poker site and it uh, turned into a small fortune for me. And eight years later, I was still playing poker professionally. 
And overnight on April 15, 2011, some of you all remember this, they shut down the poker sites, the big ones full tilt poker and poker stars. And the United States Department of Justice sees these. So imagine if all of us watching this right now, we woke up tomorrow morning and they seized the real estate industry. No more, no more could you own houses, sell houses. That's what happened to me and all my friends. And so one of the big mistakes young entrepreneurs make is that as income goes up, consumption goes up. So they start making more money and they spend more money. You need to reinvest it. And I tell these young guys, if you want a Lamborghini today, go get one or be patient through delayed gratification and have one for every day of the week, a different color later in your life. You know, so most people are just spending their money. And, and the lessons that I learned there was even though I was making a lot of money, I had to trade my time for that money. If I wasn't playing, I wasn't making money. And when that disappeared, I learned the hardest lessons of my life. <clears throat> so guys, the four different ways that you're going to create wealth are multiple streams of income, MSI. So if you have one income stream and it disappears, you're in a tough, tough situation. You, you can't stand back up. You need multiple streams of income so that if one or two disappears, you're still not feeling the stress and you're still going forward. Second thing that creates uh, wealth is equity, equity through businesses, equity through stocks, equity through, you know, any type of business model out there, it's something that's going to build up while you're trading your time for other activities, it's going to build up behind the scenes. That's how you create generational wealth. And then passive income gives you time and money freedom. And this is the golden, golden egg right here that everybody should be chasing. And this is what changed my life. I said, I'm going to work for passive income. I'm going to work for time and not money. And so if you're making a lot of money, that's great. But if you don't have time to enjoy it, what do you really have? You have a prison that you've locked yourself into. So there's a lot of people make a lot of money, but a lot of people don't have time and money. And so passive income gives you that. The last step is duplication. You have to have a duplicatable model of whatever you're doing that has scalability to it. You've never seen anybody get rich owning one house. They do it through owning multiple units. You've never really seen a single agent, unless they're in a really high average sales price market, get rich with a pin. They did it through leveraging a team. So you have to do something that duplicates outside yourself through leverage to scale. So that's kind of how I stumbled into real estate. I hopped into real estate. Uh, so what happened uh, when I left, left poker was I went out there and I found the most successful people that I know, which is the first step I'd ask you young entrepreneurs to do. Go find the most successful people that you know in your life and ask to sit down with them and ask them how they created their wealth. And what I was seeing was commonalities that they either own storage units, apartment complexes, mobile home parks, single family portfolios, some type of real estate that had passive income and equity to it. So I said, I want to do this. And I jumped into real estate uh, world head over heels and uh, I failed miserably. I went 65 grand debt six months later and I ended up having to work. I was talking about before this podcast with um, you about this. I had to work for minimum wage just to supplement and keep my bills paid so I didn't get thrown out. And um, I went 65 grand debt, taught myself internet marketing. I, I, uh, Google had just acquired YouTube and so I was work, playing around with YouTube at the time. I was linking my YouTube channels to my websites for my acquisition websites like my We Buy Houses Dallas, Sell My House Fast Dallas. And that's how I pushed my websites up to become the number one ranking websites uh, in Dallas. And I built business, my business organically through the internet. And so a lot of you guys uh, make an excuse saying you don't have money, but guys, you have time. So if you have time, the internet's here and there's endless information that's out there for free. Our, our parents' generation had to go to college because there was no instant access to information. They had to go find it unless they had the discipline and maturity to go to a library but now there's endless information everywhere, guys. And if you're not successful, it's because you're not taking uh, personal responsibility to go out there and find the skill sets that are going to treat you, take you down the path to becoming successful. That's amazing, man. You know, one thing that that really stuck out for me before we we dive into you know real estate investing is is something that I talk about, but you just alluded to is the notion of delayed gratification, where so many people are looking for that instant success. You know, we've all got these phones, and we've got the dopamine factor of you know, always getting the notifications or being able to get, you know, some getting a result and getting a fix quickly. And I find that's why people struggle so much with seeing the results in long term investing or any sort of business is because, you know, if they can't generate something that is tangible and put into dollar value today, they struggle seeing the value in doing so and investing their time to do so. But as you said, you know, if you don't, if you don't buy that car today, but you start leveraging yourself and building out a system that can scale, you can buy all the cars you want in the time to come, but you have to have the patience and persistence and the, and the discipline to make sure that you're investing your time intelligently. Right. A lot of people just don't want to sacrifice a good life today to have a great life tomorrow. And they, and they want it today. So like you guys, they're going to get into the, uh, go from agents to uh, investors. Um, you know, like let's say you're trying to build your rental portfolio and you're going to do a front end, you know, people call it a burst strategy, just a buy, fix and finance, cash out, refinance, you know, and your goal is to keep the property on the back end and refinance out. But once you fix it up and you, you get to the end, you're like, wow, the house looks nice. Let me just put it on the MLS just to see, just out of curiosity, what could I possibly get for this house? And then you get a huge offer and then you have that $50,000 check right in your face today. 
but that equity is still on the house and will be there if not growing going forward unless you know you're in a diving market maybe you dump the property but if you're in a strong market or stable market why why get rid of the property because now you can finance out cash flow it every single month build the equity in the property it's not going anywhere if anything is going up so people want the quick today money now then there's also times depending on how aggressive you are in your business you need to look at your own data your own ratio what you're tracking your business because if you're successful what you're doing and, and you're efficient at what you're doing, you may be able to take that cash out and cycle it through keeping that money fluid and you may be able to turn a high return on investment. But if you're not doing a lot of deals and you don't need the money to leave, uh, if you don't need the money to live off of, you should keep every single asset that you have. Uh, you should not sell them. You should keep, you know, the biggest regrets that people make in business that I've talked to in real estate that have been in business for 30 years is that they wish they would have kept more houses to flip more houses and wholesale houses or just listed the house and they would have put more time into their business. Um, so those are the two things that people always tell me. They would have put more time in, uh, would have taken more risks, and they would have kept more houses. <clears throat> 100%, man. You know, especially, I can only imagine, you know, when you've got that check in front of you, how hard it is to turn that down, especially as, you know, a new entrepreneur that's coming in and, and you see the shiny penny and, and you think you can just cash out. But having that discipline to, to understand the long-term reward is, is absolutely amazing. So, you know, on that note, what I'd love to talk about, and, and I get this question all the time up here in Calgary, Alberta, is getting into real estate investing. Because I find, you know, so many people go through analysis paralysis where they read every book under the sun about real estate investing. And then they, they go to every seminar and they, you know, they're going through all these programs and paying thousands of dollars, but they lack taking action. And I wish people, you know, would dive deep into, you know, finding out the basics and being able to implement that. So for anybody that's looking to get into real estate investing and getting their first, whether it's a rental or a flip or building out their portfolio, what is your advice to somebody new who wants to, you know, maybe go from being a realtor or just wants to allocate their funds a bit more intelligently? What's your advice for getting started into that space? I mean, just do, just go out there and do it and fail because you, you have two sides of the business and learning anything. So you have street uh, wisdom and knowledge, which you're learning from watching a podcast like this or from mentors or from others. And then you have street justice, what you're going to learn through paying your price on, on through actually taking action. And so what a lot of people are doing right now, and this is partly, you know, we're partly part of this, the self-development type of <clears throat> industry model. And a lot of people have been kind of uh, deceived. Now, I'm not telling you, I mean, I have 200 books right here on a shelf that I've read. But I think a mistake I made was stop reading so many books, stop listening to so many podcasts, start doing, because you hear it all the time. People say concepts that they like, oh, I know how to do this already, or I already know that. And they go to seminars and boot camps and they hear about goal setting and all the things, that, but they don't do it. And so guys, you don't know it unless you're implementing it, actually doing it successfully. You just intellectually understand something. So like I can hit a golf ball, but I can't actually hit a golf ball. You know, okay. if that and so a lot of people, get into their business and when things get tough what they do is they default into um autopilot mode and they go back and they they go into learning phase and they start reading books and reading podcasts and they start to convince themselves that they're taking action and that they're working on their business but guys you're just wasting time if you're seeing the same things in books over and over you have everything you need the only difference between you and a successful person is that person's implementing the knowledge that they've learned and so the good thing about studying and getting wisdom and knowledge up front is that you make mistakes less when you hop in and actually start taking action. So let's say you, because um, a lot of people don't understand being results oriented. For example, we'll tie it into poker. Uh, so like, let's say if you're a poker player on the last card that comes out, you bluff all in on the river, you get called, you lose all your money. Now, some people will say that was a bad play. I'm never going to do that again. But what if you could step on a high level view of a business maturity and look in from afar? What if that play was a 90% profitable play? And that was one out of 10 times that you got called and you're not going to do it again. So you should have been, you should do that over and over because it's a profitable play. Same thing in business. People get out there and they, they you know, see results oriented things and, and they're taking small snapshots of data in a small time period and they're making um, their business plan off that later when people need to get out there. So for giving an example of like failing, let's say you go make a mistake in real estate on your own. You're going to convince yourself maybe that was just a fluke or is that client or this or it wasn't a pattern. You're going to have to make it four, five, seven, eight, ten times before you identify that pattern on your own and say, oh, maybe I'm making a mistake. Then you go back and change. But by this time, you could have had some major setbacks because you make a mistake in, rehab or in real estate investing with a bad partner. You could be set back for years. Now, if you listen to somebody who says they've done this or done that ahead of time, when you make a mistake the first time when you're out there in the field, you see it and recognize 
as it plays in your unconscious mind that that person above you said, I made that mistake too. So you identify so hopefully you can make the mistake once and not seven, eight times having to identify the pattern. So learning up front is important. Then learning in the field is even more important. And the two go hand in hand to shortcut your path to success. I hope that kind of makes sense. But yeah, that man, that makes a, a ton of sense, you know, and you know, I, th I think again, a lot of people are, are struggling with the, with the implementation aspect. But again, if, if you've got the tools and you, you know, even just watching the stuff on your channel, you have more than enough for free to go out and start taking action and, you know, arm yourself with enough knowledge to understand and recognize those mistakes. Now, again, for somebody that's new in, in real estate investing, is there a certain angle that you recommend? For example, you know, rental properties, flipping, wholesaling, creative investing, seller financing. Is there, is there any angle that you recommend for people to dive into first in order to potentially mitigate the losses if it doesn't go well or to just give them a good understanding of the real estate investing world? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about for, for new people starting out that don't have a lot of money because that's like the most typical person getting real estate. Yeah. But that question can be answered in a number of different ways because some people are starting out with money ahead of time that they've saved up or inherited. And there's different strategies for people entering the business depending on their position in life and, and their freedom of time and as well as their capital they have to start out. Um, but for new investors, obviously, the fastest way to get in the business is wholesaling houses because it's little or no risk. Um, but, you know, ultimately, guys, this is your path to success. The way that wealthy people create wealth is they build a business through active or earned income, and then they move it. They, they build a business to create uh, income and put it into an investment. So they either put it into stocks, assets, or whatever. So your business would be your wholesaling business, your flipping business, your sales business as an agent. That's your active income. You should only see your active income business as a bridge to get to your passive income or your equity business, which is your real uh, freedom, you know, because a lot of people see their sales business or their flipping business as their primary business. And that's why they're never going to hit their financial freedom because they're focused only on earned income. You should see that only as a functionality of getting into passive income and, and equity, because if you don't, if you don't have passive income guys or money coming in while you're sleeping or doing another activity, you're going to die working. I guarantee you, you're going to, and plus your business model, your life is going to be very, very stressful with your emotion management because when you're working for active income, you guys all know what it feels like to have that real estate burn where this month you sold six houses, next month you sold two, next month you sold seven, next month you sold one, and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Am I ever going to figure this out again? Is what I'm doing not working anymore? And when you have inconsistencies, it creates an inconsistent emotional uh, you know, uh, line that you're kind of operating on, and that's what creates that stress and anxiety that people get frustrated on. When you start to layer your passive income, once you get to two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 a month, life slows down, the rush, the panic disappears. And once you become financially free, you actually get to know yourself because you're not trying to survive. And now you can focus on other areas of your life, your faith goals, your relationship goals, uh, you know, your health goals, everything that, that matters that you seem to neglect when you're in, caught in your business. So I'd urge people to go from starting on wholesaling or flipping houses or, or sales business as an agent to, to, to make just enough money to live off of and spend the rest of your time trying to create your portfolio or to build uh, your revenue share, or profit share, whatever type of real estate brokerage you're at. And if you're not in a brokerage that doesn't have some type of secondary income stream, you have to be. Um, there's what, What's the point? Why would you work for one income stream when there's all sorts of different companies out there that allow you to work for more? So that's what I'd say. Probably wholesaling or flipping houses. Um, get out to your local meetup groups. The fastest way to learn is through YouTube, social media. Like when I got into the business, I put up 35 grand to go through one of the ripoff gurus, right? And they, they gave me the same information in fact, a fraction of the information that's free on my YouTube channel. And so, guys, the information's available. Don't go pay, get paid tens of thousands of dollars. If you're going to spend money at best, pay a few hundred dollars for a home study course. So let's say you're paying $500 for a home study course and you bought 100 of them. What is that, $50,000? As compared to paying one guru $50,000 for probably the same information that's in one of those 50 courses, I guarantee you once you go through those 50 courses, your knowledge set and the different ideas and thought processes being sent to you from the same people, even if they're teaching the same information, it's the repetition of information from different angles that makes it sink into the, you know, into your subconscious that you can recall later. So I would consume more information, not go spend a lot and start out an active income strategy, build up that money and use that to leverage into assets. Uh, it's kind of the best path for these young investors to kind of start out at. A hundred percent, man. And, and you know, that's, that's so important for people to understand is, is to, find ways to, you know, leverage what you're already doing to get additional revenue streams, especially if there is other opportunities, again, whether it be with a different style of brokerage or whether it just be, again, so many people will just look at real estate and as real estate agents, they focus, on, they're always chasing the next deal because it's 100% commission and they're not focusing on 
you know, allocating any of those funds into anything that can get them away from having to chase that next deal. Cause you're always in the rat race and you're always, you know, again, the emotional distress of it is, you know, you're up, down, you're all around, you know, you're 50 years old, you've got a wife and kids and you've got to go show properties on the weekend. But if you were, you know, when you were 30 and you were as a real estate agent, if you started allocating those funds to something that could be, you know, lucrative down the road, I think that's, that's a fantastic perspective to look at it. You know, now, in terms of misconceptions, are there any misconceptions that you find are quite common and, and come up often in your business in terms of real estate investing? Because you know, everybody's always seeing the zero money down or they're seeing all these different tips, tricks, strategies. Is there any you know, misconceptions or mistakes that commonly come up when people are getting into the real estate investing space? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people jump in over ambitious, I guess you could say. I mean, like, you guys got to realize this is real estate's a get rich business. It's not a get rich quick business. Most businesses are get rich businesses. They're just not get rich quick. And I think a lot of people um, come in with a false sense of uh, how easy it's going to be. They watch the HGTV show and they flip houses for 100K profits. And then they say, all I have to do is flip one house a year. And then they hop in and then they close on that first loan. And they say, what's that feeling? Why do I feel so stressed out? Because you just borrowed a bunch of money. It's the first time you've ever done this. And now it's not like you see on TV. And a lot of people watch the, you know, the HTV shows. And what's the problem is like, you would never sit there and watch, because I'm from Texas, the Dallas Cowboys and sit at home and say, hey, I'm just going to hop on the field tomorrow and just go play football professionally. And yeah, they're watching yeah. these people on TV making this big money. And they just assume that they just, you know, they paint the picture that they were a struggling real estate agent, now house flipper, or they were working a nine to five. And now they be, it's a path guys, you're going to look to, you know, I would, I would expect to have a three to five year journey before you really get your business set up and operating. And so you should, you should have more money than you think to start. Um, you should put more time in than you think. And a lot of people, I just don't think are willing to pay the price to be successful in business early on. Like if you're not willing to work 60 hours a week for the first two years of your business, you probably shouldn't start a business. Um, or if you're trying, unless you're already bringing in income, if you're going full time starting day one is what I mean. But if you're bringing in income from your uh, nine to five, you should work your nine to five and then come home, eat dinner and you work your six to 12. And so people are just, I don't think <clears throat> being prepared enough ahead of time, the sacrifice that they're going to have to pay to be successful is probably the biggest thing I see. And people jump in and try things for 90 days. They quit then they go the next thing they quit then they go the next thing they quit and they quit that before they quit the next thing they're about to quit. And yeah. if they just push forward i mean think about this guys if you're trying things in your life and you're quitting within six months and you went to college you went to college for four five six years paid all this money went all this debt to graduate to work for someone else for a thousand to two thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life to make their goals and dreams come true but then when you start your own life and you go to create your own freedom and, and control your own destiny and you give up after 30 30 60 90 days or six months that's like quitting freshman year of college you know and so what the, the reason why they quit is because they don't understand how businesses work. You get paid for value to the marketplace, not time. And in the job world, what a lot of these entrepreneurs trying to get into real estate come from is a nine to five mentality where they show up for their time, they get paid for their time, and they figure out how to be, how to do the least amount of work possible to still get their check. Unless they're somehow tied into the compensation plan with the success of the business, they're not gonna go extra up and beyond because they're getting paid the same amount whether or not the people at the top of the company are making a lot of money. Some companies get bonuses and, and incentives to make them tied into the company so they work harder. But you see people over the years, they figure out how to work the least amount possible to get the same check. It's like in school when you go into a group project when you're growing up, the smart kids figure out how to do no work but still get the A and make everybody else do the work. When you get older, it flips 180 in business. You don't want to let other people and be in control of the project because they're going to cost you a bunch of money. You need to be in control. And so when you get into business, you get paid for value to the marketplace. You can work a hundred hours a week and not get paid for years because you're not adding any value. And that's the biggest thing that people struggle with talking about immediate versus delayed gratification. You may make a hundred grand a year, a hundred grand, a hundred grand, a hundred grand, a hundred grand, five years straight with your job. So you're making 500 grand, you get into business, you make 10 grand or lose money your first year. Second year, you make 25 grand, but third year, you make 150, fourth year, you make 300, fifth year, you make 500. So they don't see the exponential growth on the back end because as you're, in business longer, you make more, you've made most of the mistakes in the beginning. So you've had most of the, the having to pay your dues up front. So you make less mistakes, you get more efficient on what you're doing. So your business grows faster, you build more relationships, the people you're working with are more seasoned and it, and it just grows faster. And so it's like putting a puzzle together is how you, how I describe it to people putting a business together. When you turn the puzzle out, you have to take all that time to turn the pieces the same size up, separate them the border pieces, put the border, separate them by colors. And as it goes together, you can see the picture 
and then it, it, it goes together faster. It's only tough from the beginning to you figure out what to do. Now you know what to do and the stress goes away and it's just rinse and repeat every single day. And so that's where I think a lot of people struggle on is they're not prepared to pay the dues up front, how much time it takes to do that, and, and they're not patient enough to let it to let it happen. So guys, if you're giving up after less than a year, you're just not putting enough time in. I agree, man. You know, even one of the things that you just mentioned that I really love is talking about, you know, working hard, but versus working smart in the sense that you can be working your ass off. You can be working a hundred hours a week and working hard, but if you're not working hard at the right thing, you're not going to see the, that growth trajectory that you could potentially have if you were allocating your funds or your time or your value or your intelligence into something that has the opportunity to go on that hockey stick trajectory, right? Because so many people are working hard, but they're going to be working hard for the rest of their life because they're not working hard at the right things. And I think that's a fantastic you know, thing that you're talking about as well is not quitting. You know, Before we get into one of the, the most exciting topics that I had that we were talking to about earlier is you know, the last thing I want to ask is what was the biggest tipping point for you in your real estate investing career in the sense of, you know, did you get to a certain amount of rental properties before you became financially free? Or was there a certain tipping point that you realized that, okay, this is really working. And now, now I've got a proven system that I can start to scale because you've almost, you know, figured it out for the most part. I mean, things lead to things in business, like step, opportunities lead to opportunities. Most people that are successful in business, uh, especially they go into multiple different businesses, didn't know the business they were going to fall into when they started the current business that they're in. You guys yeah. just have to be on the field. Like, you, you know, you, you watch like a highlight reel of a running back making an incredible running play. Like he didn't, he didn't think he was going to do a, a cut left, cut right, spin move, jump over a player and run to the end zone before that play ha- happens. You, know, you just have to get in there and see things happen out there and you're going to start to see the you know you're going to see that linebacker going left linebacker going right and so you just have to be always open to looking at opportunities i think that's why most people fail is they 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 get used to doing what they're doing it's working and they stop looking for new opportunities so a lot of times you're going down this path and opportunities are coming by like boats going down a river and you just watch them go by and you say oh well that looks like a good opportunity you miss it that looks like a good opportunity some people just swim out to the boat and hop on yeah and a lot of times you, your current business that you're working on may lead you to the business that's actually going absolutely going to explode you so for example like what you're doing right now now you're having other symbiotic businesses through your social media that operate so a lot of times you're going to just need to be out there and be aware with opportunities that pop up from what you're already doing but you're not going to know until you hop in the field yeah. and start doing things and you're and, and you're not going to see the opportunities until you're actually taking action um that kind of makes sense but agreed man you know and i think it's it's important for people to understand that i had a a conversation with james lawrence the iron cowboy the other day and and that's exactly what he was mentioning is you know so many people have these big lofty goals and they share it with the world and maybe they want to become the number one realtor in your city well that's great but don't shy away from pivoting because if you can pivot into more an effective you know direction that's going to take you to a better goal or dream quicker don't shun that out because you know similar to me, you know, I, I liked being as a real estate agent, but I realized the marketing and, and branding is my passion. So if I spent the next 10 years trying to be the number one realtor in Calgary, um, you know, I'd be wasting a whole lot of time and I wouldn't be chasing a passion just because I realized something else came into my life. And I think exactly what you say, being able to stay cognizant of opportunities that are potentially coming into your space and not staying too focused to the point where you're going to miss them because exactly like you alluded to there's there's things that pop up every way you know whether it be you're meeting a new person or a new opportunity comes you don't want to shy away from anything like that now let me let me, let me give you kind of like maybe like so this can get my way that gives an example so i just started doing something right so i put fifty dollars in a poker site for fun became a career of mine right very successful. That career disappeared. I learned the mistakes that I made in that one. I had no multiple streams of income. I worked for earned income only. Um, you know, I didn't have passive income equity. So I learned from that mistake. So I realized that took me to the next step because I talked to people from that poker career, the wealthy people that I met who had the disposable income to come and lose that money for fun because they wanted to play players like myself because that was their hobby. I'm like, how do these guys have all this money to lose? And a smile on their face because normally a professional poker player, when they drop 20 grand a day, they look like they want to go jump off a bridge, right? So I said, I want to know what these guys know. So that led me into real estate. I couldn't get into that. So I uh, do what they were doing, which is owning apartments and storage units. So I started at wholesaling uh, years ago, which taught me uh, that wholesaling is essentially a marketing skill. You know, your, your job as a wholesaler is marketing for sellers and buyers and connecting. You don't have to worry about raising money. And, and then, and so that skill set of marketing for discount properties, 
uh, that I built through the internet led to Investor Army and these other businesses I built through social media. But then also I, I was able to acquire enough active income that I could start getting into flips. And then I started flipping houses primarily. And then I started building my portfolio. And I started building that up and I realized, you know, rentals are great, but it's cash flow. It's not passive. It's a business. And um, rentals guys are more for, unless you own a lot of them, it's not really a passive income play. This is more of an equity play that builds wealth for your retirement. And, um, and the problem was I was running out of time. So I was making a bunch of money flipping houses, but I was stressed out, always tied up, tired of dealing with contractors, started building rentals. Then I realized this is not giving me the time and freedom I want. So I started transitioning those into notes and I went into the note space, started creating notes all along the time I was doing this and building the YouTube channel. And then, you know, like a lot of y'all are probably getting approached with people from EXP Realty. I blew that off for about 14 months. I just kept saying, no, leave me alone. I'm not interested in that. Finally, I gave a speech in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, at a big owner financing event. And for three days, the event promoter flew out the number one guy from our company who was speaking at the same event. So I spent three days in an in Airbnb with the guy and he showed me what was really go going on. I remember being like, oh my gosh, if I don't do this right now, I'm making the biggest mistake of my career. <clears throat> so this is another business opportunity that just came up. And this was like, you know, just a year and a half ago. And now I run a real estate team of almost 300 agents across half the states of North America. That's soon about to be my biggest passive income stream of all my businesses. And so that's how you go from one business, just doing something, do something to, to build skill sets that you're bringing in money or learning lessons or doing something, just being active. That's going to, that if you're not doing that, you're not going to see the next step that opens up and then you jump, jump, and then you, and you get better, better, more efficient. But that's why people sit and talking about going way back to the beginning of this call. If you're just learning and you're just taking action, I mean, you see these people all the time, I've read a thousand books, but you've done zero deals. Yeah. You'd rather see someone that's done, just gone out there and figured it out. You know, you see people all the time that didn't go down self-development, that didn't read the books. They could have been a garbage man or someone who just hit rock bottom, but they just went out there and said, I'm going to wake up today. I'm going to put my 12 to 16 hours in. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I'm going to do this every single day until I hit my goals. And so you see it, see it both ways, but I see a lot of people become hyper successful and be high performers, not going down the education process that a lot of people do up front, but just by jumping in, some of these people can't even read or write, but they're millionaires, right? How did they do it? Just through, just through creating the action to go out there. And that comes down to self-esteem, what we're talking about, and belief in oneself. And so just do something, guys. Doing something and failing is still a win. Not doing anything, now you're actually losing. I couldn't agree more, man. Even like, you know, I'm wearing my Arte shirt right now. You know, I'm in the, in the program with Andy and Ed. And, and that's exactly what they say is, you know, they're, they're now multiple nine-figure entrepreneurs and they don't have much of an education whatsoever. And all they did was brute force grinding and they took action and they realized that they were going to fail multiple times over. But if they failed enough, they were going to find that solution that worked just by putting in the time, the effort, and the hustle, not backing down when things didn't work, right? Even Ed put out a video today about one of the most successful, one of the most foundational skills that every high performer and high achiever has is the ability to not quit. And that's a skill that they're developing is when all else is failing and people are quitting on them and it's not working out, being foundational in the sense of you not quitting on yourself is one of the most impactful things that you can ever have on your journey. So, you know, the last thing, Connor, that I really want to touch on is exactly what you talked about, you know, just a few seconds ago is the self-esteem aspect of business, because I think that's an important topic that a lot of people fail to understand is they're always developing their business skills, but they're not developing themselves. And I think that's as detrimental as, you know, the other side of things. So why don't you touch a bit on, you know, what you talk about in terms of self-esteem and developing yourself and your skills in order to make sure that your business is a proper reflection of that. Right, right. So this is what I train our agents on all the time because, you know, real estate and business is tough. It's an up and down business that, you know, you don't deal with these things in the job world because you know what to anticipate. And so when you get into the real world, you're having ups and downs, unforeseen things happen all the time. And so you guys are probably all listening to books and reading all sorts of stuff out there, podcasts, people like take action. It seems to be the cool thing to say, all these self-development gurus, just take action. Well, what they don't tell you is when you go to take action, you pick up that phone to call someone and it weighs 5,000 pounds. Yeah. It's not so easy to take action, is it? So why don't people take action more? And so there's a combination. So the action doesn't happen unless you have energy, but what creates energy? So you have to have a belief in what you're doing. So it's two steps. You have self-esteem and belief. And if you don't have both of these, you'll have no energy, which creates no action, which creates no results, which creates no income in your pocket, which creates no life that you want. And so the belief, belief is the first step. And what you're doing. Do you believe that being a real estate agent is your path to success? Do you believe that being a real estate investor, do you believe starting a restaurant? Do you believe how 
hides your belief level and what you're doing. So you have to have a solid, uh, obsessive, immersed belief, uh, being immer uh, fully immersed into believe in that if you don't believe in yourself. So the core, the core root of every business owner that's successful is their self-esteem because self-esteem creates a belief in oneself, which when things get tough, you stand up and then you have to believe in what you're doing. The combination of those two create the energy. And then when you start getting a little bit of success, that creates more energy, creates what we call a winning streak or momentum. You see it in sports happen all the time or slumps and losing streaks. This is based off the internal thought process, positive or negative. And so people need to be working on themselves. And so when I, people ask, well, how do you build self-esteem? And so one of the ways that I did it was, you know, you, you talked about the law of attraction, I think earlier. So how, how does the law of attraction actually work? Like guys, you're not just going to sit in your room and say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. It, it's the, the internal thought creates first and then it's followed up by action and energy in the real world, which attracts that to you. So you don't just go eat a taco. You say, I have, a, I want a taco in your mind. And then the external environment happens outside after the thought, it's just like a computer keyword research. So a lot of people that study my channel, I, I worked 1100 days straight when I got back into business. So I failed miserably and I got into real estate. I said, how's the fastest path to success or how, how can I get to where I'm going as fast as possible? I'm going to work every single day, every day straight until I hit, hit my goals. And so I set a goal to work a thousand days straight. I hit a thousand days and I just kept going and I hit 1100 days straight because what happens is you need to find your belief of what the competitive competition in your marketplace is doing. Everybody's different because it doesn't matter what's actually happening. It matters what's happening in your mind. So if you think everybody's working 40 hours a week and you're consistently working 60 hours a week for a sustained period of time, what happens is you start to tell yourself you're doing more than people are doing. So you deserve it more than them. You actually start to truly believe both on the conscious and unconscious mind that you actually believe it. And therefore the deservedness starts to attract uh, the success and your confidence builds. So you yeah. need to be doing more than what other people are doing or what you believe, not what other people, what you believe other people are doing. Because if you're doing less in your mind and you're thinking, well, you know, I'm slacking, I put a week on, took a week off, took two weeks, put two weeks on, took a week off, start and stop, start and stop. You're never going to open up enough to, to accept, you know, when you get out of life, what we deserve, not what we want. And if you don't believe you deserve something, you're always going to create, you're always going to pull your temperature down and you're going to create reasons to self-sabotage yourself whether you believe it or not that's what you're doing you, if you don't believe you deserve it then you're not going to be able to accept it into your life if that, i mean maybe going too high level here but that was the fastest way i learned how to, to build my self-esteem up is just to work harder than anybody else i mean you guys see this probably other leaders out like dave goggins right talking yeah. um i mean and it, it's true you hit a point where you start to realize i do deserve it more than everybody else i'm working harder than everybody else so i should have it more than everybody else and then it just happens it's, it's a weird thing so i would step it up guys and work harder and um, that's probably the best advice on how to build self-esteem i think that's so important man because it, you know again not to be the dead horse but um so many people are always just focusing they they don't they don't put any attention on themselves and they're always focusing on you know investing all of their time into business and but what they realize is they don't have business management. They can't mitigate losses because they haven't built their own foundation to the point where they're confident enough and they've got the mental capacity and the mental strength and the fortitude in order to handle when things aren't going well. And so many people back down and they, again, like you talked about earlier, they quit and then they go on to the next thing because that first thing just didn't work out. But it's not because the first thing can't work out. It's because they haven't found a way to manage their own opportunities when things aren't going as planned. So I know it's amazing, man. And, and, you know, I, I absolutely love what you're doing on your channel. And I think we're, we're going to be seeing some big things. So, you know, before we wrap up here, what can we expect from the investor army and Connor in the, in the years to come? Yeah, man, I'm just gonna, I, I'm gonna keep putting out videos, you know, it's, it's kind of a hobby of mine. Um, you know, I actually kind of took some time off from it a little bit. You know, I was super busy. I was traveling around the country. And then what happened was, like, I shut down my podcast. I said I was gonna film 100 podcasts, and I did it. And uh, I kind of stopped it for a little bit. And then I met a guy um, when I was on the road, stopped me uh, at, a, at a, uh, an event I was at. And then I met was stopping people stopping me at airports all across the country. And I was just like, man, this is actually getting out there really impacting these people's lives and so I get letters all the time coming in with teardrops on them and so I'm, I try not to measure my success financially anymore but how many people I can impact now so exactly. once you guys get to a certain level of success you're just putting more money on top of your money stacks and it doesn't excite you so much anymore like you can already you can get things things don't excite you when you change someone's life it's even a better feeling than just 
closing a big check. So if you guys know what it feels like to cash a 50 grand check, try having someone that comes up that says they just cashed a 50 grand check because of you and you change their family life and they're able to get out of debt. So I'll spend the rest of my life, you know, doing something to give back. Um, we're probably going to create some type of charity. Um, probably trying to help build oil wells or uh, water wells in, in third developed countries or underdeveloped countries. So that's probably coming. Um, I'll continue putting podcasts and YouTube videos out and just doing what I can to help people. And so guys go check it out. Investor army, I'm not trying to sell you anything, just trying to, you know, help, help people. Because when I came in, I got ripped off and screwed by so many people in the business and I just don't want people to feel the pain and go through the headaches I did. And if I can avoid some people going through that, uh, why would I not do that with my time? I couldn't agree more. And that's, you know, that's exactly why we're, we're putting out so much content on our channels is I found there was, there was a, a void in the space where so many people were learning from these, you know, gurus that take a, you know, somebody course and some, all of a sudden they're an expert. So the fact that, you know, if either of us through the content that we're putting out there can help people learn from a right source that's proven it based on action and not based on theory, then I think that's one of the best things we can do to, to give back to the community. So I'm super excited, man, to see what you've got coming up. And guys, again, I'm going to link all of Connor's information below. You guys, I know you're going to go down the rabbit hole on his channel because he's got so much value on there and so many things that, again, if you decide to, for lack of a better term, take action on some of the stuff that he is sharing with you, I guarantee that you're going to see results because I've watched his stuff. It's absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to see what you guys have to take away from his content. So again, Connor, you've dropped so many pieces of, of knowledge that are implementable and actionable on this call. And I can't thank you enough for being here, man. Yeah. I mean, let, let me leave one, one more thing. So, you know, e, you know, even though we're talking about like, I'm doing this mainly for hobby and to pay it back to you for like, definitely I still make money from the channel. I do it on the back end. Um, and so we monetize that number of different ways on the back end. And so even though it's a hobby, this is an important thing for you to understand. It's still a business. Yeah. You guys are doing, so a lot of people have lots of hobbies. I would make sure that if you have a hobby, it can pay you in some way. So at least have a hobby be a business at the same time. And there's lots of hobbies like that. Uh, some people collect baseball cards. You do it right. You can make, you know, I think people probably follow Patrick McDavid. He's collecting yeah. the business. So I learned early on it, find hobbies that make money because now you're having fun doing your hobby and you're having a benefit to the community, but also you're also bringing in income. So it's a circular all the way around uh, beneficial for everybody. So a lot of people, just wasting their extra time because you don't have so much time in the week once you're outside your business i just think people should have some type of hobby that's alongside their business that's fun for them that also makes them money i couldn't agree more and, and like you said you're gonna have so much more fun doing it it's not going to feel like a job because you're doing what you're passionate about but if you can find a way to make a revenue stream from that then you know why wouldn't you all right let, let me step back a little bit let me say maybe not make money but not make you go backwards yes. now, i would say it can make you money but what happens is a lot of people's hobby hurts them financially going forward and it's an expensive hobby like a lot of my friends hobbies they have little planes they fly around it sucks up everything that you know like if your hobby is consuming all your disposable income it's a detriment to your financial future you know yeah. so your business makes active income but your wealth is created through reinvesting the disposable income on top of your business so it's business to make your money investing to make you rich and, and create generational wealth and so if you're making money in a business and you're just spending your disposable income on your hobbies and your free time you're never going to be able to reinvest that or you're never going to be able to, to kind of scale it uh, down over the future years coming forward. So that's kind of what I see a lot of people hurt themselves is they have a, a hobby that hurts them financially. And if they're an investor, that should make a lot of sense what we just kind of discussed. Certainly. And I think looking at the big picture and the overarching picture is so important because so many people look at different aspects of their life in silos and they don't look at how it all integrates and how it all affects the overall picture and quality of your life. So Guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in to this video, and I hope you got some actionable golden nuggets you can take away and start to see a positive change in your business. Connor, again, brother, I can't thank you enough for all the value and for sharing a bit of your time here. And again, make sure you check out his content because it's absolutely amazing. So that's it for this episode, guys. We're going to wrap up here, and we will see you next time.